To put it simply, this docuseries can be summed up in three words, blackness, belonging, and connection. In the summer of 2022, when the world was still recovering from COVID-19, we gathered at the historic Dunbar Pavilion in Tucson, Arizona, and created a space with the intention of bringing black strangers together to recover and restore and to reflect through intergenerational conversations. Here are other stories. So please tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Ida. I am 61 years old. I'm a mother and grandmother of seven beautiful grandchildren. I went into um, singing. I have a very musical family. Um, my mother's a musician and she's also um, a music teacher. And I've been in Tucson since 2009. My name's Adia. I am 38. I have I, my pronouns are she, her. I have two children, two and 13, and I've been in Tucson for about five years, I think. I was born in Idaho. I was born there, but we did not stay there because my mom was concerned for my safety. Um, she was a white woman in the 80s, um, and Boise was not super friendly to, you know, mixed kids. We eventually moved here, and now I'm an artist, I'm a doula, I garden, and uh, just working to build community. <laughs> what is bringing you joy? My garden. <laughs> <laughs> I've been really focusing on just ancestral gardening and it's just been really great to watch my children embrace it and just to have a place to go, especially during COVID, to just like right. be out in the sun and not have to worry about who's doing what and who's breathing on me. So what brings you joy right now? Oh, wow. This point in my life, just my life itself, um, my church, my family, I'm retired. And so the sky's the limit. I've worked so hard um, my entire life with my family. And now it's time for me to rest. I don't know how to do it. And so I'm <laughs> taking joy <laughs> in resting. Hmm. So what does blackness mean to you? And what has shaped your blackness? Question, but I think that blackness is community, is that you can go wherever and even though maybe the dialect changes or the languages might be different you'll see the same things like when i went to nigeria i saw folks dance and i was like oh that's like how we dance at home and i just mm -hmm. love like that to me is blackness these things that we don't even realize we have in common mm -hmm. and that you can go anywhere and you can feel at home and honestly, what shaped my blackness, I think, is my father and my mother. Um, I think he really told her, you know, I need her to have black influences and things like that. And so my mother really took that to heart. She mm. would, you know, consult black women when she needed to know how to do my hair. She kept me surrounded by black folks. Um, you know, she's not a black person, but she made right. sure that I was always centered right. in my blackness and knew I was a black woman. It was this interesting though, that how your life was shaped with a, you know, white mother and, but determined to, to keep that black culture versus a black family that, um, we did a little bit different. It, it, we were shaped by our parents, you know, and their mm -hmm. thoughts and their mindsets. And, and that's, Another thing where we have to, you know, we call, you know, what is blackness and, and how is it shaped? It's, it's home. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's individual traditions. And mm -hmm. so everybody doesn't come up the same. Exactly. And so, but yet they want to <laughs> see us all the same. Exactly. And we're not. You know? um, what is life about for you? And what do you find most gratifying in your life right now? My walk with God is, is the main thing of my life because it keeps me stabilized and it and it, it it's keeping my <laughs> grandchildren stabilized because my influence seems to be the most constant. <laughs> and so um uh, that's where I focus on and that's where I stay and just stay that path and, and trust it. And, and I know it's going to help them. I know it's going to help them no matter they understand it now or not. I just know the concepts, just the mere concepts is going to help them be better and stronger people. And that's all that matters to me, really. So for me, it's peace. Um, you know, all I'm working towards 
I've always had this vision of sitting on my porch, drinking lemonade, mm -hmm. the winds blowing like a gentle breeze and like my kids or grandchildren, whoever, or both are running around. And like, that is the, the mood, the feeling that I'm always working towards and, um, and just striving to have because, you know, I come from a family where we have a lot of, a lot of trauma. And so I have always felt like, no, this is not the way that I want my life uh -huh. to be forever. Uh -huh. And I definitely don't want this for my children. Uh -huh. So every choice I make is about how can I show myself and my children simultaneously uh -huh. that we can create whatever we want. What values, ideas, and traditions would you like to see preserved? And which ones are you happy to see us shifting out of? Mainly just the bottom line, I just want to see more unity and non-judgment. And so I'm just all for love. I'm all for love, love God, love your neighbor as yourself. And you can't love your neighbor if you don't know who you are. How about you? The traditions and values and things I I love I love to see fading out are the ones of hardness within our families. You know, yes, you know, a lot of the ways past generations had to raise our families, especially within the black community, it was just about preserving our, mm -hmm. children, our children. You know, you know I got to teach, teach them so that they, so can, that survive. they can survive. I got to make sure they behave so they can so survive. They can survive. Right. And so um, I love to see people shifting away from that and realizing that we're shedding all that, that programming that was done to us for these last right. centuries. Right. right. What piece of advice would you give someone who is thinking of moving here? <laughs> <laughs> My piece of advice for anybody moving anywhere is to not assume or try to make it be like what you want it to be like. Hmm. Like, don't be like, oh, I want the black folks to be like the black folks I'm used to, or I want the city to feel like the city I'm used to. You have to, when you're moving anywhere, you have to be open. There's a reason why you're going there and it's mm -hmm. because you need something different. So you can't go to a different place and hope for the same thing. Moving to a new place is almost not looking for what they have for you. What are you going to bring mm -hmm. to your new place? Mm -hmm. You know, I, that's, that's to, for me in every aspect, even on your job, if you're moving to a new job, moving to a new place, it's, it's, you're going, like you said, you're going there for a reason. There's a purpose that you are moving. There's a purpose that there's an empty space at that employment there. And if you're going there, it's not what they can do for you. It's what you're going to bring to them and, and, and have that mindset of, of, of you making it the place that you're going to better. And what groups, spaces, and activities do you feel a sense of belonging? What drew you to those groups and spaces and activities? So I have the community of like doulas that I right. work with. And then because of our connection to the Dunbar, um, I started meeting other people and uh, I was going to um, like NAACP and things like that. So I've gotten to meet a lot of people. I wouldn't say that I have specific groups though. And that's just always how I've been. Right. I just kind of float. Right. Around. Right. I'm, I'm pretty much the same because really the biggest group that I'm a part of is a church group. And, and then we work within the community and that sort of gets me out into the community. If I didn't have a church group, I'd probably stay at home. Okay. So what do you love and or dislike about Tucson? <laughs> I love Tucson because it feels like home, even though it's very different from the Bay Area, right? As a, I feel like it it inspires community, right? We have the loop that goes around. They're mm -hmm. inspiring people to get outside. We've got all these activities for um, not just within the black community, but just in right, general, right. there's always something going on. They're always supporting small business owners here. Um, the things I don't love are maybe the roads. Yes, the roads, right. because I ride my bike and sometimes it is dangerous in these streets. Right. right. <laughs> right. Yeah, because I'm, I'm from California, too, so San Diego. So it was a culture shock when I first got here. So I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and with my life being just on the road all the time, I was just on the go. And then I get to Tucson and I said, ah! uh -huh. total just. <laughs> and so I cried the first few months, you know, um, until my pastor said, 
you can't move on until you appreciate where you are first, you know? And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. So I, I just, so I let that go and I started enjoying it and I started seeing the, the advantages of the slower pace, yeah. you know? I said, okay, I, I, I can enjoy this. All right, um, what changes would you like to see in Tucson? I know we, I know you can't come from one state to another as far as, you know, e economically, you know, um, because I, I left there at, uh, you know, $25 an hour and had to come back here and, and accept $10, you know, an hour. That was a culture shock. That, that was really a culture shock, but the cost of living is less. And so, you know, you got to weigh the odds right. and, and I'm getting used to that, but I went from this and just had to start totally from, totally from scratch. And it was just like, I had to, at age 50, I had to start all over again. Mm -hmm. And it was just, um, shocking. So for me, I think that I would like to see more consistent support and not just from black folks, but in general of black enterprises. After all the um, protesting and everything, you know, there was a lot of folks who were like, oh, let me support black businesses. Right. And then now all of that has kind of gone right. because and then. Um, get that same support. Right. Because it's like, oh, well, we're not having all these protests anymore. It's but I just think overall, I would love to see more support for black enterprises, whatever it be. That's, that's true. All right. So what do you think is the biggest difference between you and me? What are the commonalities? Your, your core, your, your core being of, of what you want for your family and, and, and what you, you stand for and, and, and how you visualize holding your family together and moving forward. I totally am in agreement with that. Well, I think the obvious is our names. So like that we have in common, they're the, the inverse of each other. Um, no, but I think just the fact that we're both creatives, we're both mothers, we both came here for our sons, right? That's why we came as um, I needed a place that was safe for my son. You came to help your son. I just, yeah, I think that we're very similar in that, that same pursuit. Where do you see yourself at my age. Um, I'm hoping by then I have made a name for myself as a fiber artist um, and that I can be, I guess, an elder in my fields, you know, with herbalism, with art, with whatever, um, right. that I can just be somebody that can support mm. people who want to follow. Well, let me see. What was I doing at your age? That's when I got started with my career because up until that point, I was doing everything for the kids, taking them to mm -hmm. choir rehearsal. And so I became a mentor to the community choir since I had to take the kids. And from there, it just branched out. What do you appreciate about um, the person across from you, me, and what do you appreciate about yourself? Um, I appreciate um, knowing that there is another um, well-balanced, um, intelligent, um, wonderful person <laughs> that I could, uh, possibly be friends with, or my family can be a part of and can be a part of the community. Um, um, and, um, together the, with your, who you are, who I am, we can, make this community better. So I think for me, what I really appreciate is your openness, um, especially because, you know, you are my parents' generation. And I think sometimes we have this idea that um, our elders are stuck in their ways. Um, and I, I think that you prove that that's not necessarily true, that you're willing to do um, whatever you need to do. Like if it's time to change, it's time to change. If it's time to um, do something, it's time to do something. And I think that that's really, um, really cool um i agree it. that's good it was a pleasure to meet you you too <laughs> all right that was it <laughs>